Hello Stampin' Friends, it's Stamp Ventures with Shauna, Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada, who is also having trouble talking tonight, <laughs> but what's new? Oh dear, okay, let's see here if I can get linked up with my iPad. Um, the live videos on iPads have just been awful lately, um, and I don't know, maybe I just need a new iPad, but... Um, They've just uh, been cutting out so, so much. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to do differently. <laughs> Anyways, we're here. It's Tuesday night. It is um, the 18th of January, the day after Betty White's, what would have been Betty White's 100th birthday. Um, yeah, January 18th, 2022. And... I'm going to start my Christmas cards for next year. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but um, I, uh, yeah, last week I shared a card layout with you and today's Christmas cards are going to be based on this, but I'm going to be cutting for 12 cards. I'm not going to do absolutely everything. I'm just going to get a start on it and give you a few tips of what I do when I'm cutting for a stack of cards. Um, and I will show you um, how I do the card layout using the Snowflake Wishes stamp set. So just before we begin, um, there's math involved in today's video. <laughs> um, you don't have to necessarily do super hard math. I was trying to figure out some stuff here. I've, I've done the hard stuff for you and then um, you'll, you'll see how I cut my pieces to the various sizes. You can see I really did hard math because I was working with some seven eighths of an inch in places. So um, that took a little extra, extra mental strain on me today. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I think we're ready to go. And one other thing that I have to share with you is the weather. Today's weather is blustery and blizzardy, that was especially this morning, out on the highway. You couldn't see hardly two feet in front of you, and it was dangerous, and people should not have been traveling. Um, by the end of the day, the sun almost came out. I think it was still kind of windy, though, and the snow is just, like, stuck and clinging to the fences and the tree branches, and the, some of it looks quite artistic and beautiful, but it's really kind of a pain. So today's weather report is brought to you by Island Vibes. Island Vibes, the celebration stamp set that will make you feel like you are not in Saskatchewan in a blizzard. Okay, and just a reminder, celebration goes till February 28th. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be um, showing you how I cut up these pieces to get them ready for my stack of Christmas cards. My goal is to get all 12 of these Christmas cards finished and actually show them to you before next month's Christmas card. So I'm planning to do the 12 months of Christmas and um, I've got like four weeks on your market set go to get all these 12 cards done so then next month I'll have a new stack of Christmas cards to show you and like I said I'm going to base this on my layout from last Tuesday which also reminds me I had put a challenge out to see if anyone um, would follow along and make a card with me or gain inspiration and come up with their own idea using this card layout and we did have someone who followed along and congratulations to Inez, Inez S from Swift Current. Um, she made a card, she wasn't able to post it on Facebook but she did send a picture of it to me in a message and um, I have some some pastel pearls, Inez, um, a, a strip of them that will be coming out your way in the mail. So congratulations! Yay! On the weekend, I was involved with a team event. Um, my team of demonstrators and uh, 12 other demonstrators and their teams across Canada got together on a, um, in a private group and we had videos and demonstrations all day long. And I showed this card layout and the theme of our event was case yourself. So we had to 
show other ideas either using the same stamp set or the same layout. And um, some of you already saw these pictures, but these are some of the other cards that I made. So speaking of celebration that I had mentioned earlier, there's two using the driving by stamp set from the celebration brochure. And I did what's called paper piecing. So I would have stamped each vehicle once on the white, and then I stamped it again on the designer paper. And in this case, it's the sunshine and rainbows designer paper that's also in the celebration brochure. I'm quite smitten with this paper. When I first looked at it, I thought, yeah, I don't need it. And now that I've played with it, I'm like, what do you mean? We can only get it for two months. Um, so then I cut out the bodies of the vehicles and glued those on to the white stamped image. And then I stamped the, um, the vehicles a third time and cut out the windows, the white windows, so that the windows didn't, and glued those on, so that the windows didn't look like they were um, patterned as well. And then I tried um, the layout. I'm not sure if I like this one as much, but with the, ooh, is it called Thinking of You? I think that's what it is. Uh, yeah, something like that from the new mini catalog. And then finally, I used the, oh, I'm struggling with words here again, um, Heart and Home uh, stamp set. And um, yeah, or one of the stamp sets from the Heart and Home suite. Um, and again, similar layout, uh, just different colors and different stamps. So let's see, before I get going and cutting and doing all that and stamping and all that stuff, just going to take a look and see what comments um, I can uh, see that are coming through. Oh, there's a hello to Brenda and Tracy and a few others who have hopped on. Thanks, gals, for um, joining me tonight. And um, I'm going to be, like I said, sharing some tips for making cards in mass. <laughs> and not in mass as you're sitting in the church no uh, making cards on mass like lots of them and maybe you have tips that um from when you make a bunch of cards that you'd like to share in the comments uh, i think we can all learn so much from each other so uh, when i go to make a stack of cards i usually start with the base pieces make sure that i have enough paper <laughs> for the cards that i'm going to make and because i'm making 12 cards and each base is half a sheet of 8.5 by 11. I needed six pieces of the Knight of Navy. And I know a lot of you have heard this tip from me already, but I'm going to um, remind you again that it is much faster to do all your scoring first and then go back and cut the pieces because then you only have to score once and cut once as opposed to cut once and then score twice. And when I am scoring in mass quantities, I always use my Stampin' Score. Is that what it's called? Stampin' Scoring? Stampin' Score tool. Um, it just makes things so fast. It's not that I don't like the score on um, the trimmer, but this is faster. So when I'm going to score with my gray scoring blade, with my stamp and trimmer, I have, to, I have to do several things. I have to lift this guide. Then I have to line up, sorry, got it the wrong way. I have to line up the paper. In this case, I'm lining it up at four and a quarter. And then I have to close the guide. And then I have to score it. And I sometimes go back and forth a couple of times. And then I have to lift the guide again and pull it out. I find that just too many steps. When in just a flash, I don't have to lift up or down or anything like that. I just bump that up into the corner just quick like that. And then I grab my stylus and I find four and a quarter and zip. It's scored. So this is one thing that I'm going to be able to do tonight and get all done for all 12 of my cards is do my scoring here right now. Just zip, zip like this. 
takes only six sheets and it takes like 30 seconds. Um, there are little tabs that you can put in here. That's what the little holes are for to help remind you where you're supposed to be scoring. I can't be bothered with the tabs. I just keep saying in my head over and over, four and a quarter, four and a quarter, four and a quarter, <laughs> um, which is an amazing feat because sometimes I'm watching Netflix when I'm doing it too. So if you ever come to my class and something isn't scored right, it's probably because I was watching a movie at the same time. Um, the other thing that I have learned in doing um, a big stack of cards is that I always like to cut in multiples of four. Um, generally speaking, when we're making cards, we get two out of one sheet of paper, two card bases. So I won't cut them all, but you know what I mean. We get two, but oftentimes the next layer, like in my design from last week here, the next layer, I can usually get four pieces out of the paper. Now that's not exactly um, the same for every card because designs change somewhat, but generally speaking, fours are a really good number to work with. So uh, I'm going to pull out my first layer of paper here, layer number one. And you're no going to notice not only is it layer number one, but it is also, um, I'm also going to cut at the same time an inside layer. So just need to find a place to set that Knight of Navy cardstock down. There we go. Okay. Um, if I was only going to make the outside layer, I would only need three pieces. But I'm thinking, okay, since I'm cutting white and I'm going to need something on the inside of the card to write on because it's too hard to see um, writing on Knight of Navy, I'm just going to cut double. Now, the size for this next layer is uh, five by three and three quarters. And I know um, for the inside of the card, it could be five and a quarter by four. I, you know, it doesn't have to be five by three and three quarters. But I'm, once I just start cutting that one size, I just keep going and cut them all the same size. It just makes things easy. And again, I don't have to think as much. <laughs> um, I find when I'm cutting, that I uh, like to, once I've got this paper into my trimmer, I like to um, start backwards. So I want to, um, I'm going to start at 10 inches and I might be off. Well, no, maybe you can see that on the, on the screen there. I'm going to start at 10 inches here cutting. That's my scrap that goes right into my scrap drawer, which is like right there, it's in my scrap drawer already. My scrap drawer is right down here at my right hand side. Um, so I've got white scraps by me all the time. And then I just move it over to five. Boom, there we go. And then um, I do that through this whole pile. 10, five, 10, five, 10, five, 10, five. And then I take all my pieces and I turn them this way. And I do the subtraction math again seven and a half. This goes into my scrap drawer. It might go in a pile to begin with and then I just throw all the scraps into the drawer after. Um, and seven and a half and three and three quarters. There we go. So uh, I'm not going to cut this whole stack of all these layers but um, that's that's how I do my cutting for a large stack and, um, and the math that's involved. Um, if it gets onto like the seven eighths, I maybe don't do the subtraction cutting as much because it's harder, <laughs> but you can if you want. That's just, just me personally. So uh, I'm going to use one of these, actually two of these. I need one for the outside and one for the inside. So there we go. That's that layer. All right. I'm going to stop for a second and take a look to see how the comment, if there are any comments here. Oh, I see Inez has joined on. Inez, I don't know if you heard me, but um, you've uh, got some pearls coming in the mail. Um, thank you for sharing your card idea. And um, you are, are the winner. Um, nobody else had time this week to, uh, to do my card um, from 
well, from last Tuesday. So um, congratulations. And okay, so now we're going to get to layer two, which is DSP. This designer paper, it was 12 by 12. Um, but since I was starting to figure out my design, I cut the strip off for um, one of the cards already and to try it out. Um, and I did the math on this and my pieces are going to be two and a half inches by three and three quarters. And I know that I'm going to get all 12 pieces out of one sheet of designer paper. And if you're wondering which designer paper this is, it's from the annual catalog. We don't have a lot of Christmas paper in there, um, but the Beauty of the Earth Designer Series Paper Pack has a little bit of this snowy, wintry looking paper in with the fall papers and in the 12 by 12. So in case you're wondering where that came from. And I want my pattern to be up and down the three and three quarter inch way. So that means um, I'll do my two and a half inch cuts vertically so um, and I could I could do the subtraction math if I want to or I can uh, let's see if I was doing the subtraction math I would have started like see two and a half five seven and a half ten I would have started at ten and then I would have moved down to oh, with the ten cut there would have been this little extra bit trimmed off just take that off seven and a half and then five and then two and a half and with the designer paper being thinner you can um, do two pieces at a time if you want so I've doubled up two and now I said uh, hmm, what size was this three and three quarters so I can go seven and a half get rid of that extra piece and three and three quarters. There we go. And I'll grab one of these for my, um, my sample for tonight. So those are those pieces. I would just keep cutting until I've got all 12 pieces cut out from the designer paper. Let's see, that was layer number two. Okay, layer number three. This is the one that's a little bit trickier. I only need two pieces of cardstock for it. And if this is the Knight of Navy, and each piece is going to be two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And this is where I don't like doing the subtraction <laughs> with the seven eighths because uh, I have to think too much. Now I have figured it out. I want the three and seven eighths. This will be three and seven eighths, and then this will be another three and seven eighths, and there'll be a little bit left that will get cut off. And then the two and seven eighths will go, um, go that way. Hmm. I want to say it's vertical, but I'm moving down horizontally, so I don't know if that's helpful to say vertical or horizontal. Oh, not three quarters, seven eighths. So that's like an eighth of an inch before four. Sometimes instead of saying three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths, I just say almost four, almost four, almost four. Uh, so there we go. And then I turn it sideways and I would do this with both pieces. Um, going to move it two and seven eighths, which is almost three, almost three, almost three. Okay. And set that out of the side and take the one for my sample for tonight. Last layer is, um, oh, this one's nice because it's two and three quarters by three and three quarters and you get eight pieces out of a sheet of cardstock. And um, so this one I can get seven and a half, the one way, seven and a half, that's an extra strip for my scraps. And then three and three quarters. And then, oh, two and three quarters is my favorite number for cutting paper. I know it's kind of weird, but it fits perfectly into 11. So I'm a math geek that way. Not a huge math geek, but a little bit of a math geek. So there's eight and a quarter, five and a half. So now I'm doing the sub subtraction cutting. 
and two and three quarters. And there I've got all four pieces ready to go. I only need one for tonight's um, demonstration, but I just love cutting with two and three quarters, um, especially when it's eight and a half by 11 paper. Okay, so I think I've got everything cut that I need for the one card that I'll show you tonight, but I'll go back and finish cutting all the rest of the pieces and make all the cards and challenge myself to get that done by next month's Christmas card um, demonstration so that um, by December I'll be laughing with all the Christmas cards that are ready to go. Okay, so I mentioned that one of these are going to go on the inside of my card and I'll glue that in right now. And you know, well, I could, I could stamp it with something on the inside, but I'll think about that when I uh, go to do the rest of them because I don't have a lot of other greeting stamps here right now, except for the ones that are just the Christmas greetings, that is, except for the ones that are in this set that I'm working with. Um, and so, yeah, if, uh, if I decide to stamp something on the inside, it's, it's better to stamp it first and then glue it down. But um, I'm looking to see where did I set the stamp set. Here it is. Yeah, I don't think I'll, I'm going to be using Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas on the outside. I'm not sure that I want to use any of these other greetings from this particular set on the inside. So we'll see. And it's always nice too to add a little snowflake or something. But sometimes you just have to get it done. And if you're, you know, if you're a get or done card maker, if you get the outside decorated and you get it in the mail and people actually get it and receive your card, you're way ahead of the majority of people. So yeah, um, kudos to you. This piece, um, I was going to run it through the Stampin' Emboss machine with the text, no, tasteful textiles embossing folder. And there, I've got one done ahead. It's um, very subtle. And I was thinking if you have the embossing folder, like with the snowflakes, that would be an awesome one too. So this is the five by three and three quarters going on next. So basically putting this card together, very similar to last week. Um, I did change up the dimensions of the last two layers just a little bit. And I'll talk to you about those when we get to them. So that's glued down. And then this is gonna go in the center just like last week. And I think last week I even pulled out my ruler so I kind of sort of had an idea if I was hitting the hitting the center. Let's see, there's there's the five inches of the white. And so this one needs to go from one and a quarter to three and three quarters, something like that. And you don't necessarily have to measure. Like I said, if you even get it glued on there and get the card done, you're doing well. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm going to stop for just a second and take a look and see if we have any comments or questions. Okay, <gasps> Pam, you have snow in Carolina? No way. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Well, we had a blizzard here today. How much snow did you get? Holy smokes. I know that Ontario was getting quite a storm too. It really sounded like they were battening down the hatches. Oh, and Tracy, I'm glad that you um, like the process that I'm sharing. Um, I, I'm weird that way, like, but I, you know, everybody has their way of doing things. So just because I'm doing it doesn't necessarily mean it's right. It's just the way that I do things. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, this is basically how I do my kits, except I don't have to glue them all together. And thanks, Pam, for sharing. You have three birthday cards and three thank you cards to get made this week. Oh, you're going to be busy. I, I guess it's good that it's birthday cards and thank yous. That sounds that those are, are good reasons to be making cards for. 
and you feel like you're behind. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm always behind. That's just, I don't know, me. But um, nine inches and still more to come. Holy smokers. That's a lot of snow. So did your kids, did the kids stay home from school and all go um, uh, making snowmen and tobogganing and all that? I bet they were, uh, wow, I bet they were having fun with that. Oh, wow. Oh. Um, I don't think the kids were outside today doing much here. Um, the ones who were live in town, they went to school because the town buses were running. It was the ones out in um, the country. Those kids didn't get picked up because it was too dangerous. The bus drivers couldn't see more than five or six feet in front of them. And so they, uh, the kids that live out of town had a snow day today. Um, and it was, it was miserable out there. We did have a couple of nice days uh, last week and there were lots of kids out this weekend tobogganing and such which is so good because we have had so much cold weather that they really needed the opportunity to be able to get some fresh air okay so I, this card like I said I want to get her done and get it in the mail so it's maybe not going to have as many bells and whistles and cutouts as um, some other cards that I've done and I'm going to be having lots of stamping on it. Stamping is, I find, faster than die cutting. And um, when you've got a stamparatus, it's even faster. So this two and three quarters by three and three quarters piece of paper is just a little bit smaller than the piece of white that I used last week. Just like whatever a quarter inch in each direction or something like that so it's just a tiny bit smaller um, and that's because I'm working with snowflakes that are a little bit smaller the images are are small um, and I have things set up on my stamp apparatus and I'm going to be stamping first with Knight of Navy ink and what I did was I took my photopolymer stamp and I set my snowflake down there the photopolymer snowflake and then I set my words down there and lined them up just where I wanted them. And then I closed this plate and picked the sticky back of the photopolymer stamps up with the plate. And once you've picked them up, then you're ready to stamp them. So I'm gonna put my case under there to level it off. And I found when I was stamping this that I wanted really nice dark blue. So I might even stamp it twice because I just liked how crisp the dark blue looks against the white. So I've got to make sure everything's lined up in the corner. I always do the corner line up. Um, and there we go. I've got the foam mat underneath because it's always good to have foam to press into when you're using photopolymer stamps. And I actually put an extra piece of cardstock underneath my foam mat for a shim. I just wanted to make sure that those photopolymer stamps were going to um, touch right well into the, uh, onto the paper, get all the image. And I could leave it there. That's not bad. That actually has a lot of nice, nice navy blue in it I might uh, touch it up once more and that's the beauty of the stamparatus is once you've got everything lined up make sure you're lined up in the corner again you can go back and re-stamp it and make it just a little bit darker and you're going to notice along the edge where the hinges of the stamparatus I always push a little extra harder um, it's just a little bit harder for sometimes the image to reach the paper along the hinge so that should be good and blue oh yeah is it ever oh hmm I didn't quite hit it right on I've got a little bit of a dummel a dummel <laughs> it's dummel a double image going on there shoot hmm I might do this one again let's see that's the thing too it doesn't oh blue ink okay turn it over where am I infecting it from to see if I can see it on my hands um, that's a nice thing it's I mean if you need to do it again it's quick okay make sure this is lined up 
Make sure. Okay. Once more. This tempting fate there saying, oh yeah, you're going to hit the same spot exactly. Well, sometimes not perfectly. Okay. And I feel like, yeah, I could stamp a little bit more, push a little bit on the words down there in the corner. And the reason, the other reason I want it to be a quite um, a deep navy blue is that the next color I'm going to use is Misty Moonlight. And I want there to be a contrast between the navy, which is really a deep blue and the misty moonlight which has quite a bit of depth to it but it's not quite as intense okay yay it worked that time okay but I still have to keep this lined up again make sure I've got the lineup because now I've got my other snowflake which is going to superimpose over top and create a little bit more interest in the color and design of the snowflake and this one I think I'll probably only need to stamp once mm, maybe I lied <laughs> who knows okay and I'm pushing up close by the hinge there I'm giving a really good press up there and not as hard down at the there okay and what I find once I get going with a stamp apparatus and the stamps are re-inked with the same color every time it goes quite quickly because the stamps kind of hold on to that color and it's just like you're reactivating that color that's there um, yeah you know what I might want to stamp this one once more could have put a little bit more ink on that that arm of the snowflake well let's hope I will be close for the lineup here there push push there. Good, good. Yeah, and I like that all 12 of my cards now are going to have their stamps in very similar places, and I can watch my favorite movie while I'm doing that. I don't have to concentrate too, too hard. So now I'll put the card together and just be layering the two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Oh, I better close this up. Um, white piece okay oh boy you can just see <laughs> i'm going to be infecting my card um oh i should have had my uh it's not not close enough for me to reach i should have had my sanitizer my hand sanitizer close by to release some of that ink um so Two and seven eighths by no two and three quarters by three and three quarters is gl being glued on. I don't know why I'm turning that around. Um, looks straighter the other way. Uh, to the two and three eighths by three and three eighths. Yeah, I've got somewhere there's ink on me that's touching the white. <laughs> okay, so I might have to come up with something to cover that up there. That's a whole art in itself is learning how to. Um, fix a mistake so yeah those bottles of hand sanitizer that we've been using um, just to protect ourselves from the germs that are out there those are handy to keep by your stamping table and they sometimes release and help get rid of some of that ink that's on your hand as you can see when I get to the edges of my um, the edges of my dimensionals I just pull them off. I sometimes I go and I cut, 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 cut and clip them all the way around, but some days I just don't bother to do that. Okay. So this will heavens. That's looks a little bit lumpy there. Okay. Maybe maybe I should have cut them. Don't do as I do, do as I say, right? Okay. More blue on here. There we go. So that's just centered. And I, when I send it out in the mail, I don't want to get dinged for a lot of extra postage. Um, so I don't want to put like a great big gem on it that's going to charge me extra. I'm just going to grab one of our 
basic rhinestone jewels to put that in the center like that and it pops because it's got a nice dark blue center there and um, yeah and I'll call it good and I'll think about how I might uh, work with some of the <laughs> blue smears mind you when people get this they're going to look at that and say oh, she did hand stamping on there she made this card that's why <laughs> they will not think oh she bought that at the store <laughs> okay yeah I don't think people think that too much um because they know that I make my make most of my cards so that's um what I'm going to do for the next little while um, is make a stack of these cards and get started for next Christmas. And like I said, it's fairly simple, but it's, it's doable. I think I can make them in quantity. Um, sometimes when I go to mail a card and it has a gem on it, uh, the gem actually from rubbing in the envelope like rubs right through and the gem sometimes sticks out makes a hole in the envelope and sticks out so I usually mail a letter with my Christmas cards so I'll probably when I fold my letter I'll probably put my letter over top of the gem and then slide it into the envelope so then that won't make a hole in the envelope and fall out in the, the process of going through the postal system okay so I'm just taking one last look here um, the kids are home from school in North Carolina, but you don't have any at home anymore. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, take care everyone out there. Be safe in the snowy and wintry and ugly conditions. Um, and, uh, if you have any questions, um, about the cards that I made or about the Stampin' Up! products or celebration, please give me a shout. I would love to help you if I can. And um, I will not be back next Tuesday because next Tuesday is book club. Um, and I don't think, I think I have, some, yeah, have something else on Wednesday night. So I may have to pre-record a video or maybe just hop on maybe Tuesday afternoon or something. At some point I'll, I'll surprise you in there. And um, yeah, next week's video will just not be at the regular time. But then February will hit and hopefully things will be back to normal. So thanks again, everyone, for joining me tonight. Uh, have a great week and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.